Hi everyone, uh, so I had a rough night. I have a lot of rough nights. Uh, what I'm discovering through this war is that it's very different than what I imagined. I kind of imagined people in war, like in the Holocaust, moping about all day, but it's, it's not really like that. Some days you feel strong, like, yes, we can do this. And some days I just feel kind of normal, like, okay, time to do laundry and make sandwiches. And then other days it's just like this grief that creeps in and overwhelms you. And it's not progressive or linear. It gets like worse or better, it's just up and down all the time. And last night I made the horrible mistake of reading something that I should not have read prob probably ever, but certainly not before bed. It wasn't a video, but you know, little, um, little by little, the Israeli security forces are having to comb through these body cameras taken off of the bodies of the terrorists because they actually wore body cameras to capture their moments of depravity. And so the Mossad released yesterday a description of what was seen on one of these videos, and it was so horrific that even knowing everything that we know about what happened in the massacre, it was so much worse than anything I had ever heard. And you know, Jordan Peterson often notes that in artistic depictions, hell is most commonly portrayed as a bottomless pit because there's this cap to like how good things can really be. Like you can be really happy, you can have a really great day, can't get much better than perfect, but evil, no bottom. Like just when you think you've gotten to the bottom, you realize you were not even close to the bottom when you thought you were at the bottom because it just keeps on going and going. It is actually a bottomless pit. And so what I read last night haunted my dreams and I woke up in the middle of the night and my whole body was shaking uncontrollably. I couldn't like control my body temperature. I felt so cold that I pulled off Jeremy's blanket and lay there shivering, convulsing under these two blankets. And when I woke up in the morning, I had this like intrusive thought about Maccabees. And every year around Hanukkah time, I study the book of Maccabees with my kids. And there's this one part that I always have to skip over and they get really mad because they feel like I'm hiding the good stuff from them, but I literally press the pages down so they can't read it. And I tell them that page you're not reading. You're not reading it now. You're not reading it like in the next decade. Maybe when you're 18, you can read it. And I think the reason that the book of Maccabees suddenly came to my mind today was because the closest thing I had ever read in my life, it came Anywhere in the vicinity of what happened to us in this massacre was that page that I always hold down describing what the Hellenist Greeks did to mothers and babies if they found out that the mothers had circumcised the babies. And it exceeds any depravity that the Nazis could have ever dreamt of. And it's so horrendous that that's the closest thing that I've ever encountered in my life that comes close to the accounts of what's coming out now from the massacre. And what's so psychotic is that I actually missed that page. Like I yearn for that page because what seemed like the worst thing I had ever read in my life would have actually been a blessing compared to what was done on October 7th. And as I'm trying to make my kids breakfast this morning, I had a lot of things planned today, but I was like gripped by this thought that I need to talk about the Maccabees. And I was like, okay, but there's still a lot of time till Hanukkah, no pressure. Why am I stuck on this? But it just was what it was. And I'm like, okay, Hashem, I'm listening. I'm listening. You got my attention. So just to get a picture of how um, out of it I am, I opened up two tabs on my internet browser. One, I Googled, this is embarrassing to say, I Googled what day is it? <laughs> like, what is the Hebrew date today? That's how out of it I am. And on the other tab, I Googled things that happen in the month of Cheshvan. I'm like, why is this coming to me? Because we know that Hanukkah happened in Kislev. What is Cheshvan? coming into my mind for. And the first thing that pops out of me is that in the month of Cheshvan, Matityahu, the priest that started the Cheshmonian rebellion, died in Cheshvan on the 15th day of Cheshvan. And then I pop back into my other browser, guess what day it is? The 15th day of Cheshvan today. So today is the very day that Matityahu started the Maccabee rebellion, died. But the day he died, he didn't just die. There's not just a verse saying he died. The verses tell us in the book of Maccabees 1, the legacy that he gave to this children, his children on this very day. And so that's what I'm really wanting to share with you guys, because these are words that reverberate through history and they were spoken today. So it says in the book of Maccabees that the days drew near for Matityahu to die. And he said to his sons, arrogance and reproach have become strong. It is a time of ruin and furious anger, meaning look around. There's a time of this kind of arrogance and it's just a time of evil. And my children, show zeal for the Torah and give your lives for the covenant of our fathers. The message that he's giving to his children is be willing to die for the sanctification of Hashem's name. Remember the deeds of the fathers which they did in their generations and receive great honor and everlasting name. Was not Avraham found faithful when tested, when it was reckoned to him as righteousness? Joseph in the times of his distress kept the commandments and became Lord of Egypt. Pinchas our father, because he was deeply zealous, received the covenant of everlasting priesthood. Joshua, because he fulfilled the commands, became a judge in Israel. Caleb, because he testified in the assembly, received inheritance of the land. David, because he was merciful, inherited the throne of the kingdom. 
Elijah, Eliyahu, because of his great zeal for the Torah, was taken up to heaven. And then he continues and tells the stories of the Jewish heroes of old, Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, Daniel. And he says, now observe from generation to generation that none who put their trust in Hashem will lack strength. So do not fear the words of a sinner, for his splendor will turn into dung and worms. Today he will be exalted, but tomorrow he will not be found because he has returned to dust and his plans will perish. My children, be courageous and grow strong in the Torah, for by it you will gain honor. So he's telling us people who look like they're high and mighty today, they're going to be nothing. But people who hold on to the Torah, even if they die on the sanctification of Hashem's name, they have an eternal covenant with Hashem. Matityahu was this person in a sea of seemingly overwhelming evil, so reminiscent of what we see now. You know, if you guys have been following my previous videos, you know I've been tracing the word Hamas in Hebrew through the Tanakh, but the book of Maccabees was only maintained in Greek and retranslated Hebrew, so we don't know the words that the book of Maccabees actually used. We only have a translation. But Hamas is more than a word because you know it when you see it. And what the Greeks did in the time of the Maccabees, what Matityahu saw was definitely Hamas, every manner of horrendous thing. And Matityahu was able to look at that sea of evil and say, I don't care. If my sons and I are the last people to know the difference between good and evil, I don't care. We're going to go down fighting. And they led a rebellion that brought together all of the simple, faithful Jews, not the ones who said, well, let's do some, you know, we'll take a little bit of Greek, take a little bit of that. Faithful Jews who were able to defeat the mighty Greek armies. And those words were spoken more than 2,000 years ago today, but they're still echoing. The Maccabees took strength, Matityahu took strength from the fathers before them from Avraham and from David and from Pinchas and took strength, but now we take strength from the Maccabees and it just connects to something deeper that's been happening to me lately in this process. And I know it's happening to other people. Maybe it's happening to you. You guys know I'm like from, I'm observant. Uh, you know, sometimes I look at things that my mom, or my grandmother do. I hope mom and Bubby that you're not watching this. In the past, they seemed like a little, um, how do I say this nicely, like superstitious, old-fashioned, like I'm a sophisticated Jew. I have degrees in Judaic studies, but my mom and my grandmother, they're always lighting candles to remember our dead ancestors. And it got to the point that sometimes I'm like, mom, you're going to set off the fire alarm, like the smoke alarm. Uh, it just seemed like a big, like, okie dokie, mom, that's like an old people thing to do. And then my friend Miri, whose husband is the army on the first day of the war, was so distressed and she came over and she was really like having a bit of a freak out. And she said, do you have candles? And I was like, I oh, have some Shabbat candles. And she started lighting candles and praying over the candles. And I'm like, well, you know, she's Sephardic. They're also more old fashioned. I just didn't get it. And then five days into the war, I was struck with this powerful wave of grief and I didn't know what to do with myself. And Jeremy was out shopping at the grocery store. He asked if I needed any groceries. And I said, buy candles, buy yours a candle. He's like, okay, like a candle. And I was like, as many as they have, like if you want to invest in stock right now, invest in a candle company. Cause at that point, that's where most of my life savings is going. I don't know why, but Jewish women light candles. It's what we do apparently from Sarah, our matriarch down to our mothers and grandmothers. It's what we do. And I was looking at it before, like, I don't get it. But then suddenly it's like the spirit of all the mothers before me came into me. And it wasn't something I was even trying to do consciously. It was just what my heart was crying out to do. And I just found myself praying over candles. Candles. And then came that first Shabbat on Friday night. Jeremy was so ex so exhausted that I decided to give him the night off. And I sent him to bed and I stayed awake to listen to the walkie-talkie to hear if there was any emergencies that I have to wake him up for. And, you know, Jeremy's asleep, the kids are asleep, and there were all these, like, warnings about the possibilities that there would, God forbid, be a terrorist infiltration right where we are. And they said, be on high alert, be vigilant. So I'm sitting there being on high alert, being vigilant, whatever that means. And I forgot to leave my Shabbat lamp on, so I'm lying there in the dark being vigilant and thinking through every scenario of what I would do if... And I'm just gripped with this terror that was more than just my own terror. I couldn't escape feeling that I was somehow like plugging into my, like my soul into this river of other Jewish souls from all the generations before me. And I was trying to think how many mothers of mine going back all the generations sat there on Friday nights when everyone was sleeping and it's dark, wondering if this is the night the, the Egyptians are going to come and take her baby. Is this the night the Babylonians are going to break down the walls? Is this the night that the Greeks are going to break into my home? Is this the night that the Romans are coming? The Crusaders are coming? The Cossacks are coming? Is this the night the Nazis are going to find me in my hiding place with my children? And it's like in this war, I hear the words of Mordechai to Esther. Like, did you think that you would escape Jewish fate into the palace? Did we really think that our generation would not know what all of our mothers and fathers knew, all the suffering that they knew? And I felt so grateful to them all of a sudden because 
The easiest thing for every single one of those generations would have been to assimilate, to escape the burden that's so heavy. I have American citizenship. I have a passport. The easiest thing for me to do right now is to get on a plane and disappear somewhere in small town America into the ether. No one would ever find me, but I'm here because someone before me in every single generation before me decided to stay Jewish, even at the price of that terror that grips you at night, imagining the eyes, them imagining the eyes of their children, pleading to them to save them and not being able to do anything. And we're tapping into that once again. And I feel like every generation before me is alive in me right now at this moment. And then suddenly, Jeremy sent me a video of a commander speaking to his troops right before they go into Gaza. And I knew that he was feeling, and all of them are feeling that same feeling. And I wanted to share it with you. <laughs> שחטף לנו מתינוק בן חצי שנה שנמצא בשבי, המוח לא מעכל, ועד זקנים וזקנות. הרוע המנוול הזה, אנחנו יוצאים להילחם. אנחנו לא לבד. נמצאים איתנו כאן, וככה אני מרגיש, לוחמי דוד המלך. נמצאים איתנו המכבים. נמצא איתנו מרדכי אנילביץ', לוחמי גטו ורשה. נמצאים איתנו לוחמי חירות ישראל. אצל והלח"י והפלמ"ח וההגנה וכל הלוחמים בכל תולדות ישראל. ואז נינו ל... And you know, there's a famous passage in the Talmud, in Tractate Yevamot, also appears in Tractate of Odazara, that says that Rabbi Asi says that the son of David, meaning Mashiach, will come only when all of the souls, yichlu mehaguf, will be finished from the bodies. And that's really cryptic. What does that mean? And, and uh, you know, he references that to the verse from Isaiah, Yeshayahu, in 57, verse uh, 16, for the spirit that enwraps itself in me, the souls that I have made. And that's a really strange thing to think about. What does that even mean? And the Maharal in the book of Netzach Israel says that what this means is that all of the souls and the generations before the end of days, before Mashiach will come into the world, meaning in the past generations, before the generation Mashiach will come into the world in bodies, all the souls up until now have come into the world through bodies. But in the times that Mashiach is approaching, the, the great souls of the past, those souls will come back into the world, but they won't be encased in bodies. They're just going to come back into the world. And I know I'm actually feeling that. I'm connecting to past souls and heroes of the Jewish people. That's maybe why I've been drawn so lately to try to learn about the heroes of the past and how they faced Hamas, how Noah and Avram and Sarah and how David faced the Hamas. And it's like they're here with us now, encouraging us, holding us up. At, and you know, it's the same time, at the same time, it's not a one-way road because if we can muster up the courage to live up to this time and you know, then we're raising them up as well because they aren't here right now in bodies. They didn't get to physically see this generation, the ingathering of the exiles, the renewal of the Jewish people in our land, the renewal of the Hebrew language. They didn't get to see us, you know, physically. But if they can see us spiritually channeling all of their courage, all of their sacrifices, maybe we could be worthy vessels of all of the sacrifices that they made before us. Because maybe alone we're not strong enough to defeat the evil that's come upon us in the world now, but maybe feeling all of the souls of the Jewish heroes before us and their holy neshamas living through us and watching us and watching over us, maybe us together with those previous generations, maybe we will be able to merit to banish the evil that has come now into the world. So with that, I bless us all to really merit to be worthy to be worthy to carry the names and to carry the spirits of the generations that came before us because we're only here thanks to them. And may they, through us, merit to see meaning and, you know, catharsis, meaning and catharsis and, and, and geula, just salvation, come through everything that they gave us. So with that, I wish you guys a good day, a good week.